Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to today's video where we're going to be looking a little bit more at this macaw but this time focusing on the feathers. This one's got really bright ones and I think you're going to really love this so let's get straight into it. So one of the first things that I'm doing is just putting down a really light base. I'm going in with some really light yellow. So I'm using like a light cadmium yellow, putting that down as a base for this one. Now, usually when you see some of my pet portrait or wildlife drawings like this, you see me put down like a warm grey or a like ivory tone. But this time, because the feathers are really super bright, really, really pigmented, I wanted to go in with some of the colours that were kind of more along the lines of complementing the, the actual colour of the feathers. So this particular patch of feather was actually red. So complementing to red are orange and yellow. So I wanted to include yellow as a base. It's just going to really help to pick up those red tones, really enhance them. And it gives it like a really fiery effect as well. So that's the first thing that I have done here, just put down that base and then I've slowly worked my way through some of the darker colours, so as I mentioned kind of going through some darker yellows, oranges and then building up into some reds. And for the darker areas within this particular set of feathers I've actually gone in with a dark red and I've actually gone over with some green as well. Because when you add in green over red it actually kind of, they cancel each other out and it creates almost like a grayscale tone and that's really perfect to add into shadow areas so if you're looking for a nice colour to add to shadows without making them look muddy by using browns and some dark greys and all of that kind of stuff use the kind of opposite colour that you can see on the colour wheel and that will just help to balance out the red tones in this case and it's just going to create a really nice dark tone. The actual feathers on this particular part of the head were quite nice and fluffy and there were lots of different directions on this very first tuft right next to the beak here. So all I've done is just paid really close attention to the reference photo and used my initial base layer of that light yellow and just kind of shaded down in the direction that the feathers were going. And I've just made sure that when there's any kind of feather change in direction that I've mimicked that with my base layer. And when I'm adding this base layer down I'm using some really light pressure um, not putting hardly any pressure at all through the pencil and just shading it down really lightly. So then we come into some of these green feathers and this was actually one of the more difficult parts of this particular um, reference photo because there were a lot of green feathers kind of spattered in with those red and yellow tone feathers. So for this all I did was just mapped out some of the green areas and some of the yellow areas and just worked on them separately and then when they kind of blended together just made sure that I brought some of those red tones into the green and those green tones into the red. You can see you get a really nice mix of colours and they actually do blend quite well together. For the green areas, instead of going into the shadows with a red, I actually went in with some darker blue, so I actually went in with some dark indigo, and this worked really nicely with this particular type of green. So the greens I used here were some May green, permanent green, so they were really nice and bright and vibrant. So adding in some blue is a complementary colour, and it works really nicely at creating some shadow areas. So rather than going in and adding in all of the dark areas with like a brown or something, I've just gone in with a complementary really dark, dark blue colour. So throughout these feathers, what I've done in terms of layering and the way I'm layering the pencils down is just working in the direction of the feathers. So on the back of the head here, they're kind of curving around over the eye and then coming down towards the back. I've just used the side of the pencil for my initial base layers and shaded that down. Again, with a light pressure, made sure that I'm kind of working in the direction of the feathers and just building the colour really lightly. So just going over a couple times and building that colour. Then I'm blending with the white pencil to help smooth everything out. And when I'm blending with the white pencil, it is actually kind of desaturating the colour, making it a lot less vibrant. So then I'm just going in, just accentuating some of those colours once again, and then using some of the darker tones. So as I mentioned, the blues, some darker greens, and a little bit of brown here and there to just add in the kind of darker shadows that I can see within these feathers on the head. So the feathers on the head are these really wispy, really parted feathers and there is actually quite a lot of detail so I'm kind of adding in a lot of lines here, kind of like you what you would add when you are doing fur but not grouping the lines so close together so you get like a, a really dark area. I'm just keeping them really kind of spaced out and I'm kind of latticing them over one another so kind of crisscrossing like you're almost cross hatching as well in some areas here just to get that kind of over 
overlay look. I'm really paying close attention to where we do have some of the shadows, where some of the feathers are sitting over the top of others as well. And then again, just using some complementary colours like those dark blues in the green areas. And if I have a yellow area, just kind of going in with some darker oranges and reds just to give a little bit of shadow. As we come to these feathers on the cheek here, we're again, we're going in with the same technique. We're putting down that base layer. We're making sure that we're keeping it really nice and light, really nice and airy, not going in with too heavy pressure and making the feathers look really kind of flat straight away. We're just slowly building those tones and those colors. And then I'm working in at adding some of the darker areas first and then going back in and adding some details. So as we come down further towards the beak, you kind of get a bit more of like a normal kind of feather the pattern where they're not kind of like airy and spaced out so much they're kind of um, like really overlapping like you would find on an ordinary like ordinary feathers the ones at the side of the head and the um, top of the head are just really kind of almost like a peacock feather where they're really separated so just to get that again on the side of the face we're just going in and kind of latticing those darker colors when we're adding in a little bit of texture so now we're getting into, as I said, that kind of normal kind of feather pattern. So what I'm doing here is putting down that base layer, again, using a really light color for the base, so like a yellow or a light green. And then we're going straight in and adding all of the little scalloped edges. So where you look at feathers, you kind of have some, at the very bottom of your piece, you'll have some that are like underneath this whole other layer of feathers sitting on top. So more towards the head are the ones that are going to be like on the very topmost layer. And then towards the bottom, you've got all of these feathers overlapping. So you just want to make sure that you go through. And as you can see here, it's kind of like you were building like a wall of bricks. So you want to make sure that you're going through and adding in like all of the darker areas around each of the individual feathers that you can see adding in any kind of parts of the feathers like where the feather is slightly parted like maybe where the winds hitting the bird or something like that you want to add in all of those darker areas first and I find it a lot easier to work feather by feather in this case so I'm starting towards the left hand side and then slowly working over towards the right and I'm just working on adding in the shadows and deepening the colors of each individual feather one at a time and then working on the next one and then making sure that they all blend in so first of all adding that base layer down all over then going through and depicting each individual feather that is most recognizable and like most dominant on the reference photo and then going through and blending and shading each individual feather and adding in any specific details in those feathers there's a really nice transition of the green feathers into the yellow and all I've done to get that transition is used the lighter greens and the lighter yellows on the base and just kind of really blended them into one another. So the greens are more on the left side so then I've traveled some of the green through to where we have the yellow on the right hand side and then some of the yellow through to the left and just get that nice overlap and then just blended with the white pencil and then added some more of those colors over the top until we get to the correct saturation. You can see again in this bit that we're seeing here, I've kind of gone in with that base, added in all of those little individual darker areas, depicting each individual feather, and then you can see that I'm just kind of darkening those shadows, and then going in and blending and toning the rest of the feather to help to blend it into one another, really deepening those colours on each individual feather. So. For these red feathers towards the right hand side, I've actually gone in with a light base of some light cadmium yellow. Then I'm adding in the darker areas with a dark red, so my darkest red colour. And then any kind of areas that need slightly more darkening, I'm adding in a little bit of blue and a little bit of green. Again, try and really help that shadow develop. And then from that darker area, I'm then blending out using the darker pencil and blending it out into the kind of bottom of the feather where it is brightest. So on these feathers, you'll notice that at the top of the feather where you've got some sitting over the top will be the darkest area. And then as you work towards the bottom of the feather, you'll get to your lightest colors. So you kind of want to make sure that you add in all of your shadows to the top half and then leave the lower half a lot lighter and brighter. To do a little bit of blending, instead of going through and using the white pencil on these particular feathers, I didn't want to desaturate the colour too much, I actually went through and blended with some of the lighter yellow. So I used some light cadmium yellow and I also used some uh, dark chrome yellow as well, which was a really nice colour to actually add um, to help to blend all of these particular colours, especially the red ones. 
I found that when I blended with the lighter yellow tones it just made the feathers look a lot more fiery, a lot more alive and they just looked really shiny and vibrant. It's all very well blending with a white pencil. It's good for blending, you get a really nice smooth surface but it does desaturate the colours and in this case I didn't want to have to keep working over and over to resaturate those colours so I just used those lighter yellow tones, worked out really well. Of course I did use the white pencil where I did have a lot of light hitting the bird so on the grain and the kind of blue tone feathers on the back of the head you can kind of see the colors a little bit desaturated in comparison to the red feathers on the chest of the bird and that's because that's where you've got a lot of the light hitting the back of the bird you can see on the side of the green wing here that I've added in a lot of white just where the feathers are reflecting a lot they're really oily and shiny so I wanted to represent that and then as we've come round into the more sort of shadow area which is where the red feathers on the chest are they're a lot more vibrant and they're a lot less kind of blended with the white so you can't get very much of that shine they just kind of have that natural sheen of the lighter yellow tones if that makes sense so the trickiest part of this was this green wing here and to get this really nice vibrant green color I went down in first with some light yellow then I just layered up some lighter greens and to get this kind of blurry not really defined feather feather effect on the wings I just used a lot of the mid-tones and darker colors and really blended them into the lighter areas and didn't really add too many kind of detail lines or detail aspects to this particular area and I think it actually worked really, really well. I added in a little bit of some dark phthalo green and some cobalt green onto the wing as well to help bring out some of those blue tones. And that worked really well. Again, making sure that I blended all of those blues and those green tones into one another so it really wasn't like pow in your face and really kind of detailed. I wanted it to be a little bit blurry compared to the red chest feathers. That's where I wanted the attention to be drawn here. So to do those feathers again I just followed the direction of them, shaded down and just building some really light layers and just going over and over and again blending with the yellow tone towards the right hand side of the portrait to get that really nice vibrant green colour and then using the white pencil more towards the left hand side where the light's actually hitting the bird. So I'm just going to bring you in for a close up for this guy because I think he really needs it and I'm just going to show you some of the detail marks and you can see the kind of like cross hatching, the crisscrossing of some of the feathers around the side of the head and on the top of the head and you can see how that technique is a lot different to the feathers on the chest. The feathers on the chest are a lot more blended, a lot slicker, I've added in a lot more layers and worked in that slightly different um, technique of adding in the base layer then going in and defining each individual feather and then going through and working on each one individually whereas the feathers on the head and the side of the head again they're a lot more spaced out there's a lot more of the paper texture that you can actually see through there and yeah you can see the difference in the different textures so that's pretty much it for this I really hope that these quick explanations of the feathers have helped you if you're working on your own macaw or your own bird with this particular kind of like feather patterning if you want to check this out in real time then there is a six hour tutorial of this guy available over on Patreon and to my website. I'm going to leave a link in the description below for you guys. I think you will really enjoy this one. It's a really good project and it's also a good project for like blending all of your colours. So I go into a bit more depth as to how I've actually applied the pencils to blend them all together to get this really nice kind of seamless effect. But I'm going to leave the links to both of those in the description below. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!